The United States and Russia have more than 12,000 nukes combined. Over 3,000 of those can be launched within 15 minutes' notice. We avoided annihilation in the Cold War, but what if an all-out nuclear war happened today? How would it escalate based on current military strategy? How many minutes would we have? And how many people would die? We'll simulate the apocalypse in today's episode. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're glad you're with us. Princeton's program on science and global security, along with Alex Wellerstein of the Stevens Institute of Technology, have created a new simulation for a plausible escalating war between the US and Russia. We won't keep you in suspense any longer. Here's their four minute simulation. More than 30 million people would die immediately, and twice that many would be injured. As the video points out, deaths would rise as nuclear fallout settles. This occurs when residual radioactive material propelled into the upper atmosphere falls back to Earth. 
the long-term effects of an all-out nuclear exchange between the U.S. and Russia would be severe. Agriculture would be significantly reduced for at least a year, likely more. Anyone surviving the war in the affected countries would face destroyed supply lines, limited water, food, and near or below freezing conditions. More recent estimates suggest that even after arsenal reductions from the U.S. and Russia, nuclear winter remains essentially a certainty. A July study from Rutgers calculated that fires from burning structures following the blast would inject 300 billion pounds of soot into the atmosphere. This would push temperatures below freezing in the summertime in the Northern Hemisphere, reducing planting season by 90%. Global average surface temperatures would fall by nine degrees Celsius. Rainfall would also drop meaningfully near the equator. It would take several years before surface light from the sun was even half what it was before the war, and complete recovery would take a decade. There's no cheery conclusion here. With thousands of nuclear weapons on standby, such a scenario is terrifyingly possible. And even if we avoid intentional war, there's always the chance of an accident. In 1960, U.S. early warning systems reported long-range Russian missiles were launched with 99.9% .9 certainty. It turned out to be a false alarm from moonlight. Two years later, U.S. missile operators in Okinawa were ordered to launch 32 warheads, but the order didn't include instructions to go from DEFCON 2 to DEFCON 1, as would ordinarily occur. The crew asked command if they should switch to DEFCON 1, and the launch order was canceled. It was a mistake on their end. In 1995, the launch of a weather rocket from Norway triggered Russian early warning radar. It had the launch characteristics of a high-altitude electromagnetic pulse weapon. Russian forces went on full alert, and President Boris Yeltsin activated his nuclear command suitcase to authorize a full retaliation. Thankfully, no more launches were detected, and the alarm was canceled at the last minute. The list goes on. There have been at least 20 false alarms over the past 50 years. The only way to ultimately reduce this risk is to ban nuclear weapons entirely. See the video description for more on efforts to do this. We could spend an entire other episode on these close calls, and probably will in the future. In the meantime, you can read more about them in the study linked below. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos like this.